What if you could make a river climb a mountain? This is not science fiction. This is the new age of engineering. To build it, they would first have to break the mountain itself. The first step, to map a battlefield of solid rock, ton by ton. The footprint for the impossible was carved with explosives. An army of machines began the assault, tearing away millions of tons of ancient rock. The challenge isn't just the height. It's building three separate towers on a vertical cliff. To go up 200 meters, they first had to dig down 50. Every joint secured by hand, every wire a link in an unbreakable chain of steel. This isn't just foundation, it's a 10,000 ton anchor. It's holding the mountain itself in place. The lifeblood of the project arrives. Thousands of tons of concrete, a river of liquid stone. It finds every gap, every void, becoming one solid piece with the steel skeleton. Day by day, the pit vanished, replaced by a solid base of unimaginable strength. The anchor is set. Now the climb begins. This steel collar is the mold, a climbing factory that will build the tower from the inside out. The design was revolutionary, a hollow concrete spine, strong enough to lift a warship. The steel ascends, every piece lifted into place, a vertical jigsaw puzzle on a colossal scale. This formwork is the key. It climbs and the tower rises with it at a rate of nearly three meters every 24 hours. Three towers, three separate sites, one single monumental challenge. High above the valley floor, there is no room for error, only focus and a steady hand. Day and night, the towers grew, climbing out of the mountain's shadow. The gorge was no longer natural. It was now a canvas for ambition. The engineering is perfect, a textbook execution, but it's the sheer speed. Inside the giant walls, a cavern of concrete. This hollow core is the secret to the tower's strength. Even a single centimeter of deviation at the base could mean meters of error at the top. There was no time to rest. The river, the mountain, and the schedule were all unforgiving. They had not yet reached the sky, but they had laid the foundations for a stairway to the clouds. This is the vertical factory, a platform that never stops, constantly moving upwards. Every vertical meter, we add another 400 tons of concrete. The climb is relentless, a few centimeters at a time, powered by a hydraulic heart. The steel skeleton grows ahead of the concrete skin, a constant race between two teams. Three towers, climbing at once, a logistical ballet on a scale never attempted before. They pass the 100-meter mark, halfway to the sky. The work only gets more dangerous from here. At 100 meters, it's not just about compression. This density of steel with this cross hatching. Everything and everyone came up on this lifeline. The project's artery clinging to the tower's side. With every meter, the world below shrinks away. Up here, there is only the wind and the concrete. In this vertical world, even a moment's rest is a luxury earned at extreme altitude. The tower isn't just a wall, it's a precisely machined track for the 15,000 ton elevator. Every weld is a point of fusion, making thousands of small pieces into one giant solid frame. Constant testing, every batch of concrete had to meet standards more rigorous than a skyscraper's. You can read the tower's story in this stone. The pressure, the quality, the strength. A perfect break, it's all here. They no longer looked like buildings, but like something elemental, a new part of the geology. The net was a promise of safety, but the true safety was in skill and not a single misstep. At this altitude, the wind isn't just weather, it's a physical load. From here, you could see the curvature of the earth, a view earned by the hardest kind of labor. Up here, the towers became neighbors in the sky, 
their shadows stretching for miles. In this shaft, a 7,000-ton saw solid steel counterweight will travel. It's a hidden dance of physics. They were building caverns in the sky, spaces designed to hold machines of unimaginable power. Before the concrete sealed them forever, the conduits were laid, the nerves of the machine. Inside was just as challenging as the outside, a vertical world of concrete and echoes. These are the final levels. The engineering is at its most critical here. Every pore must be perfect. Even the cranes had to climb, jacking themselves up the very towers they were building. From this seat, the operator was the master of the site, a job requiring nerves of steel. The air grew thin, the work grew harder, but the summit was now in sight. 200 meters, we've reached the top. We haven't just built on the mountain, we've built a new one. The last piece of the skeleton, a final offering to the sky before the structure is complete. With practiced hands, they guide it home. The last piece of a 200 meter high puzzle. Building the tower was only phase one. Now, we must give this 100,000 ton giant its heart. The final pour, a symbolic moment, turning the frame into a monolith. A summit reached not by climbing, but by building the very ground beneath their feet. The banner is a declaration, a sign to the world and to the valley below that the Titan is complete. As the first Titan was crowned, the other two raced to meet it. The finish line was the sky itself. The climbing factory is disassembled, its work complete. The true face of the tower is revealed. Piece by piece, the machine that built the towers is unmade. And then there were three, identical siblings of concrete and steel standing ready. 200 meters of sheer vertical ambition, a man-made cliff smoother than any in nature. The skin of the giant, a surface of pure compressed strength built to withstand immense forces. Every square meter inspected, a final check, ensuring the skin of the Titan has no flaws. The pillars were ready. Now they had to build the river that would flow between them. With the towers complete, the battleground shifted from the sky down to the valley floor. To support a river in the sky, they first needed to build the legs of a colossus. Meter by meter, the support piers rose from the valley, reaching up to meet the towers. This pier has to support 5,000 tons of water and steel. But the real challenge is sideways force. Miles away, the river itself was being born, not of water, but of thousands of tons of steel. Each section, a piece of the puzzle, a prefabricated slice of a future river. Now came the heaviest lift of the entire project. There is no margin for error, zero. For the first time, a piece of the sky bridge takes to the air a moment of truth for the entire team. The lift is slow, precise. They are fighting gravity, wind, and time itself. The first connection. The bridge is no longer a dream. It is a reality taking shape. At 200 meters with nothing but air below, they began to stitch the river together with fire. No time was wasted. As one section was secured, the next was already in the air. The structure is as solid as bedrock. But to hold water, this steel floor needs to be perfectly sealed. A high-tech membrane, the final barrier. This is what will contain the millions of gallons of water. Section by section, the bridge reached across the void, closing the gap between the titans. The keystone, the final link in the chain. Everything depended on this last, perfect fit. A perfect fit, down to the millimeter. The steel river was now whole. A solid 200-meter steel beam would tear itself apart. These joints allow the bridge to expand and contract. Sealing the joints is a painstaking process. Every inch must be perfect to prevent a single drop from leaking. The sky bridge was complete, a triumph of engineering, spanning the impossible gap but the work was not over. They had to do it all again. Another bridge, another valley. 
The final weld, the last spark, the steel skeleton of the entire system was now one. A final layer of concrete protects the membrane, giving the aqueduct its smooth final channel. Now, the doors, massive steel gates, the final piece of the water containment system. Test after test, the gates must be as reliable as the bridge itself. Even here, a lifeline, a hidden path for the inspectors who would forever guard the river's health. It is ready, a perfect riverbed, 200 meters in the sky. It was a strange and silent sight, a perfect canyon, 200 meters in the air waiting for a flood. The twin bridges were complete. The path was forged. The impossible was now waiting. The body was built. Now it was time to give the giant its heart and its muscle. With the path built, they now needed the vehicle, a steel box designed to hold a ship and a river. This is the heart of the lift, a 7,000 ton steel bathtub Moving it to the tower was a monumental task in itself, a slow, careful journey for a house made of steel. The plan was simple and insane. They would lift the entire 7,000-ton box to the top of the tower. Not a crane, but strand jacks, a system that pulls inch by inch with almost limitless power. The ascent begins. 7,000 tons of steel, now airborne, held only by a web of cables. For hours, it climbed, a slow, steady journey to the top, where its true descent would begin. This is one of the most dangerous lifts in modern construction. The forces involved are astronomical. Reaching the summit, it was positioned over the abyss, ready to be lowered into the heart of the machine. And then, it descended, a steel heart, lowered into a body of concrete, never to see the sun again. In the penthouse of the tower, the muscles were installed, electric motors of immense power. This is the gearbox of a giant, each tooth engineered to move a mountain of water and steel. This is where the power translated to movement, a 50-ton gearbox that converts 10,000 horsepower of raw electric- For every action, an equal reaction. A massive counterweight was assembled to balance the caisson, a perfect balance. This allows the motors to lift only the weight of the water and ship, saving vast energy. Now, the tendons. Miles of steel cable, each one a bundle of hundreds of smaller, stronger strands. The cables are threaded through the system, connecting the caisson, to the pulleys, to the counterweight. This final pin unites the entire system. From now on, they move as one. The system was now complete, a perfectly balanced scale waiting for the command to move. For the first time, the heart of the tower receives its lifeblood. The system powers on. Locked into its tracks, the caisson is now a true elevator, capable only of moving up and down. The first movement, a single meter, to test the brakes, the balance, and the response. It completed its first full journey from top to bottom and back again. A successful test of an empty machine, the system is sound. The mechanics are perfect. She's ready for her purpose. The heart was installed. The muscles were ready. All that was missing was the river itself. The work of seven years comes down to this moment. The order is given. Flood the river in the sky. For the first time, water enters the channel. The test of a thousand welds begins now. Gallon by gallon, ton by ton. The bridge accepts its burden without a single tremor. The system is ready, a placid man-made river flowing 200 meters above the valley floor. And then, the first voyager, a vessel chosen for a historic journey to the top of the world. It enters the lock, a ship sailing into the heart of a building, a beast into a cage. All systems green. Total mass is 51,580 tons. Balance is perfect. The command is given, not with a shout, but with the quiet press of a button, the first ascent, the machine awakens, lifting a river, a ship, and a dream towards the sky. Power draw is stable across all four motors. Ascent speed is perfect. She's performing exactly as designed. The sky gates open, revealing the path forward, a calm stretch of water leading into thin air. 
the maiden voyage. A ship sails out onto a river in the sky, leaving the land behind. The system came alive. A new, flowing river of commerce, running over a mountain, 